It's October 1962 and the city of Kampala is ablaze with excitement. Every street is draped with the vibrant colors of the black, yellow, red flag, the symbol of a nation on the gas of being born. The Duke and Duchess of Kent descend from the skies, representing the Queen of England on this historical day. Now as the world watches on, Uganda's Prime Minister Apple Milton Obote steps up to the podium to take his oath. But as the road to this momentous occasion was far from smooth, it was a journey filled with demonstrations, riots, and unwavering demands, a journey that led to this very day. In this episode of Uganda in History, we dive deep into the remarkable journey, tracing the steps that brought Uganda to the threshold of independence. To truly understand this remarkable journey, we must journey back to where it all began. The origin of the struggle for Uganda's independence was the founding of the Uganda's first political party, the Uganda National Congress, UNC, on March 2, 1952. UNC, which spread the gospel of nationalism and fought for Uganda's independence, was founded by none other than Ignatius Kangabe Musas of Uganda and Abubaka Kachama Mayanja, plus other four from the different parts of the region. Now Musazi went on to become the founding president general and Mayanja became the founding secretary general. The other four automatically became child persons in their respective regions and the gospel of nationalism spread like wildfire. Now the party was formed at the Kabakas Lake in Mengo in the house of the late Chitamireke and his home went on to serve as the headquarter of the party for several years before it moved to Katwe and later to Kolo. The place was also the headquarters of the two newspapers, the Uganda Post and the Uganda Express, which were the UNC's mouthpiece. Now Musazi shot to prominence following the political disturbances of 1949, which were codenamed Number 9 when African farmers demanded for full participation in the gilling of their cotton and marketing it without any middlemen. He emerged as one of their leaders and formed the Farmers Association called the Federation of Partnership of Uganda's African Farmers under which he invited the other UNC leaders from outside Buganda to join him. Musazi's leadership qualities were hatched in London where he was a theology student with initial intentions of becoming a reverend in the Anglican Church of Uganda. Now while in London, he met with Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, George Padmoy of Jamaica, and Hastings Kamuzubanda of Malawi, and two other British MPs belonging to the Labour Party, Mr. Fanny Brockway and Mr. John Stonehouse, and together they organized the first Pan-African Conference known as the Manchester Conference of 1945, and they passed strong resolutions that Africa must be liberated. Now while in London, Moswazi was in contact with Reverend Hewitt, who was nicknamed the Red Dean of Canterbury because of his socialist ideas. Now, Reverend Hewitt had visited Russia during the time of Joseph Stalin after the 1917 Russian Revolution, and it said that according to what he saw in the new Russia, he embraced socialism and the principle of welfare state. Now, following the Manchester Conference, the Anglican Church in Uganda refused to ordain Mosazi, reasoning that because of his contacts he had made with the African freedom fighters, he could not carry out the church's work with independent mind. Now within this period, Kenyatta came back to Kenya in 1948 together with another freedom fighter, Semakula Mulumba of the Batakabu movement, and he embarked on organizing of the Mau Mau rebellion which liberated Kenya. Musazi also came back almost at the same time. Now with the breakout of the Mau Mau rebellion in 1952, Musazi quickly decided to turn the Federation of Partnership of Ugandan African Farmers into a political party. Hence the UNC with the national rallying cry of independence now. Now both Musazi and Mayanja were in combative mood after the formation of the party. Mayanja, who was a student at the Makerere University, issued a press statement announcing the formation of the UNC and he used the postal address of the university. Now European newspapers in Kampala and Nairobi came out with banner and headline, Politics Enters Makerere. The Musazi's group later on spent weeks moving everywhere in the country spreading the gospel of nationalism and telling people to demand for independence now. UNC gained a lot of support and popularity throughout the country. Ignatius Kangavu Musazi once said that he was inspired by Albert Lutholi, one of the founding fathers of the African National Congress of South Africa in 1912, and Mahatma Gandhi, who founded the Indian National Congress in 1915. Now, the independence by Ghana on March 6, 1957 also inspired Musazi to fight for Uganda's independence. Dr. Nkwame Kuruma, the first president of Ghana, 
organized the first Pan-African Congress in Africa in December 1958 in Accra and he invited all the African freedom fighters. Mayanja from Uganda was the Secretary General at the conference and Tom Boyer from Kenya was the chairman. The conference passed strong resolutions to liberate the whole of Africa. And Kwame Nkrumah went on to say that independence of Ghana is meaningless unless the whole of Africa is fully liberated from the chains of colonialism and white imperialism. Now on November 30th, 1953, a terrible tragedy befell the Buganda Kingdom. The Kabaka, Sir Edward Mutesa II, was exiled to Britain by Governor Andrew Cohen. Now the exiling of the Kabaka offered a great opportunity for Musazi to consolidate his new party UNC in Buganda and the rest of the country. UNC was at the forefront for the money for the Kabaka's return from exile. The period from 1953 to the time of independence was the real time when the whole country was gripped with all kinds of political parties. Motions demanding independence were being moved from time to time by Y.S. Bamuta or UNC from Masaka, Dr. B.N. Kunuka, Apollo Milton Obote, George Magezi, Kulfat Obagor, and Balaki Kiria were all main speakers in the Uganda's Legislative Council on the motions demanding for independence. While the Kabaka was exiled in London, Uganda became highly politicized, leading to the formation of Uganda's second political party, the Democratic Party DP. DP was founded by eight young revolutionary Catholics, and these included Joseph Kasolo, the founding president general, Joseph Kasule, the secretary general, and other six members who came from different parts of Uganda. The party was founded on October 6, 1954 at Rubaga. Kasolo led the party for some short time and handed over power to Mateo Mugwanya. The eight leaders were products of the then famous Catholic schools like Naminyango College, St. Mary's College Chisubi, St. Henry's College Chitovo, and St. Peter's Secondary School in Sami. In 1958, the party changed leadership from a conservative Mateo Mugwanya to a young, charismatic, and visionary British trained lawyer, Benito Kajimu Chiwanuka. Now, Chiwanuka transformed DP into a party of all tribes and religions. His good leadership qualities saw him lead the party to victory in the first general elections of internal self government and he became the first prime minister from March 1961 to October 1962. In 1955, the country was crippled with all kinds of political activities. The year saw the formation of Uganda's third political party, the Progressive Party, by Eridadi Medadi Kasiri Morira, one of the most highly educated Baganda and a nationalist at heart. He traversed the whole country, preaching the gospel of nationalism and independence. Morira was one of the Buganda negotiators in the Namirembe Conference, which made the 1955 Buganda Agreement, and he was one of those chosen by the Buganda's Luchiko to go to London and negotiate for the Kabaka's return in 1955. Now, besides the formation of political parties, the exiling of the Kabaka of Buganda in 1953 marked a turning point in the struggle for Uganda's self-rule. The Kabaka did not only refuse to accept the East African Political Federation, but he also demanded for independence for Uganda. The relationship between Buganda and Britain was completely shattered by this standoff. The situation warranted an independent mediation between Buganda and Britain. Now, the British government agreed to the mediation demands and a constitutional expert lawyer, Sir Keith Hancock, was sent to Uganda in 1954 to chair the negotiations which were named the Namirembo Conference. The negotiations ended in marking of the 1955 Buganda Agreement which allowed the return of the Kabaka on October 17, 1955. Now, the 1955 Buganda Agreement made big political changes in Buganda and Uganda. The agreements had important clauses touching on the independence of Uganda. When 1961 was approaching, the British government, in line with what is stated in the Buganda's agreement, set up the roadmap to Uganda's independence. They appointed the JV World Committee in January 1959 to study the views of Ugandans on independence. JV Wild was a constitutional lawyer in the Secretariat in the interview. The JV World Committee recommended the registration of voters throughout the country and holding of general elections in March 1961 and the formation of an internal self-government. The committee also recommended the setting up of a constitutional committee to tour the country and collect views and recommendations from Ugandans on the independence constitution and draft it. Now when the registration of the voters started, 
the Kabaka's government and the Buganda's Wichiko advised the Baganda to boycott the registration because the position of the Kabaka and the Buganda kingdom had not been known to how it will be depended from Uganda. Uganda took its stand because in 1958, the British colonial secretary, Mr. Reginald Moulding, announced that Uganda shall be developed as purely as an African unitary state with proper safeguards of foreign minorities. Now, Buganda strongly went on to object this statement because it was not in line with what was stipulated in the 1900 Buganda Agreement and the 1955 Buganda Agreements with Britain. Now, according to these two agreements, Buganda was to have limited autonomous powers and was to become a federal state when Uganda finally became independent. The situation was ratified when the British government set up the Relationship Committee in 1961 after the first general elections. Now, Lord Monster, who chaired the commission, went on to tour the whole country, collecting views from Ugandans on the matter of independence. Lord Monster also recommended a federal system for Buganda, Bunyoro, Toro, Ankole, and Busoga. In July 1961, there was the first constitutional conference at the Marlboro House in London, and Ben Chuanuka attended as the Prime Minister. This is where he opposed indirect elections for Parliament for Buganda. But British had already received the Lord Monster recommendations that Buganda should become a federal state. As a matter of principle, I cannot accept indirect elections for Buganda, Ben Chuanuka told the colonial secretary, adding that if you insist on this, I will walk out of the conference. And indeed, he walked out. Now, earlier on, although Buganda had boycotted the registration of voters, two strong political parties at the time, the UNC and the DP, defied the Mengo and advised the Baganda to register. Chuanuka issued a statement calling upon the Baganda to register because independence was coming. The elections went on to be held on March 25, 1961, and DP won the elections. Benedicto Chuanuka became the first prime minister and informed the first internal self-government. His government awarded scholarships to 400 Ugandan graduates who went on to Europe and America for training so as to later on take over from the European civil servants. Now, towards the end of 1959, a terrible situation developed within the seven-year-old Uganda National Congress. The party split in two factions due to a serious disagreement among the top leaders concerning the management of funds which were donated by the People's Republic of China to assist UNC in the liberation struggle. There was a faction led by Ignatius Kangabe Musazi, George Kanuka, and others, while on the other side, the other faction was led by Mayanja, Apollo Milton Obote and Otema Alimadi. Now, in March 1960, Obote decided to enter into negotiations with W. W. Retsiba, who was the leader of the Uganda's People's Union. Now, the Banyankole protesters had formed the UPU to rival DP, which was very strong in Ankole because of the Catholic Church and people such as John Kabareho, Basil Bateringaya, and Boniface Bianima. Now, during these negotiations, Obote insisted that because UNC was very extremely popular everywhere in Uganda, the World Congress must be in the name of the new party. And Retsiba went on to agree, and they formed the Uganda's People's Congress, UPC, and elected Obote to become the first president general. He led the party for 45 years until his death in 2005. When the UNC went on to split, Mayanja joined the Kabaka's government as a minister for education. While the Musazi's faction died a natural death because of the popularity of DP under the leadership of Benedicto Chiwanuka and the emergence of the Kabaka Yeka party on the political scene in Buganda. Now, early in 1962, a group of influential Baganda resolved to form a Buganda-based political party, Kabaka Yeka, KY. Now, other Ugandans nicknamed them the Menko Bagandas because they showed an attitude of being more Bagandans than others. Now, Masembe Kalibala, who was very influential in the Kabaka's government, spearheaded the formation of the Kabaka Yeka and he was elected the chairman. Now, the party's objective was to protect the position of the Kabaka and Buganda in an independent Uganda and to ensure federalism for Buganda. The Buganda's delegates in the Lancaster House Conference to approve the 1962 constitution were all members of the Kabaka Yeka and they made sure that Buganda's interests were entrenched in the 1962 constitution. Now, all the 21 Buganda MPs who were nominated by the Bugandans Uchiko were KY members. 
KY played a leading role in negotiations with the Obote's UPC in September 1962 at the time of the formation of the alliance for the second general elections before independence. Now, in June 1962, the British government convened the Uganda's Independence Constitutional Conference at the Lancaster House in London. The draft constitution which was prepared by Lord Munster was discussed and approved by the delegates from all areas of Uganda. Now the delegates approved the following Independence Day for October 9th, 1962, Federal Systems for Buganda, Bunyoro, Toro, Ankole, and Busuga. The Ugandas were equal to nominate 31 Buganda members to the Uganda's National Assembly except in Kampala, holding of a referendum two years after independence in the lost counties for the people to decide whether they wanted to remain in Buganda's kingdom or to be under the kingdom of Bunyoro Kitara. The referendum was held in 1964 and the people in the counties of Buyaga and Bugangaisi voted to be under the kingdom of Bunyoro Kitara. Now after the Lancaster conference, Buganda demanded that there should be another general election before independence on October 9, 1962. Their reason was that Buganda did not participate fully in March 1961's general elections. The British government supported Buganda's demands and announced that another general election was to be held throughout Uganda on September 4, 1962, so that the people can elect a new parliament and a government to lead them during full independence. Now, the major two political parties in the 1962's general elections were DP and UPC. They both secured equal number of seats in parliament outside Buganda. Now, Buganda had the offer the deciding vote to side with any of the political parties so as to gain majority in parliament and be able to form a government. Now, because Obote had supported Buganda at the hilt of the London Conference, the Buganda's Lichiko decided that Kabaka Yeka should form a political alliance with UPC. That political alliance enabled UPC to secure a majority in parliament and form a government, and its leader, Apollo Milton Obote, became the executive prime minister. Now, Apple Milton Obote received the constitutional instrument of independence from the Duke of Kent on October 9, 1962 at Kololo. The then Kabaka of Buganda, Sir Edward Mutesa II, stood next to Obote at the ceremony. Now, in the truth of the matter, there was no need to repeat elections in September 1962. Ben Chiwanuka should have continued as the Prime Minister and should have been the one to receive the instrument of independence on Independence Day. But because Kabaka's government insisted on having another election, and they had the support of the British government in this matter, the elections were repeated on September 4, 1962. Now, politically, the Kabaka's government, the Buganda's Lichiko, the Mengo Baganda, and the Kabaka Yeka's party did not know or fail to realize that by dropping Benedicto Chuanuka, the Baganda were losing its political power and state power, which they have never gained up to now. Now, on October 8, 1962, the Duke of Kent, who handed over independence to Uganda on behalf of the Queen of Britain, visited Mengo together with the Duchess of Kent and addressed the Buganda's Luchiko. He announced the end of the protection agreements which Britain had made with Buganda, symbolizing the end of the special relationship between Buganda and Britain as stipulated in the 1900 and the 1955 agreements. That is why the Buganda officially celebrate October 8th as the day when Buganda achieved independence. On the 9th of October 8, 1962, millions of Ugandans convened at the Kololo Independence Grounds to witness the hoisting of the black, yellow, red flag of the independent Uganda and lowering of the Union Jack. All the kings in Uganda and leaders of the different categories attended. Jomo Kenyatta, who was the president of Kenya, and Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, who was the president of Tanzania, attended. Now, besides the hoisting of the Ugandan flag, other spectacular events was the fireworks which lit the whole sky at Kololo, which was the first time that Ugandans saw fireworks in the skies of Kampala. Now, on October 9th, the biggest event at Kololo was the receiving of the constitutional instrument of independence by Dr. Apollo Milton Obote, the executive prime minister from the Duke of Kent, who was the Queen's representative. Millions of Ugandans attended the event and celebrations went on countrywide. Now, if independence was the rallying cry for Uganda, then Uganda had gotten off to a wrong start for the events that will follow. Now, if you found this video informative and engaging, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. This has been Regan for Uganda Industry. 
And all I say to all Ugandans out there is happy independence and enjoy this one.